Hey, Northern Dice, and today I'm going to be unboxing my copy of Jaws by Ravensburger. It doesn't release in England until November, but they brought it for the Tabletop Gaming Live event, and I was lucky enough to pick up a copy. It's a semi-cooperative game in a sense that you have got a team of people trying to stop the shark player, and you've got the shark player. And if you've seen Jaws, the film, it should be pretty straightforward. The shark wants to eat as many people as possible and eat the boat, and... Human players sort of want to stop him. So, if we have a look on the back of this, it is the experience of Jaws, the tabletop strategy game. One player menaces the island of Amateur with a three ton grip white, while other players go on a hunt as Brody, Hopper, and Quint. So, it is four players with one player as the shark and three as the humans. I know the game works in two phases, as you can quite clearly see there. One on the island trying to prevent the shark from eating as many people, and the other on the boat trying to kill the shark in the end, I guess. Um, interestingly about this game, it didn't come in cellophane. It was stickered on the size. I believe Ravensburger are taking a big, big, big push on recyclable and looking after the environment, which is fantastic. But at the same time, a big risk to getting sharks the size of jaws. I still think it's pretty awesome. Very good of them. So straight away, we have got... What is this? Instructions, which is what you want straight away. I think I can see punch balls. It's making me feel a bit sick. So, Act 1, Phase 1, have I banned Phase... Phase 2, Shark Phase, Phase 3, Crew Phase. I'm assuming that's a cycle, explaining how everything happens. And then you've got Act 2, which is the Orca, which actually looks like it's different cards. So I'm imagining that you can get it slightly damaged as you go. I have seen some snippets of gameplay from this, but not a grand amount. Enough to keep me interested, but at the same time, it was the fact that it's, it's, it's Jaws, the board game. Um, that in itself sort of had me sold. So we've got Amity Island here. Nice, thin, it's relatively thin. Oh, and this, this is the boat, this is the boat. So it's, the so it's just a double-sided board. Relatively thick. It feels quite sturdy in itself. And the board is really, really well illustrated. And I like the definition between the different areas, the different symbolisms. It makes sense within itself. So I'm going to slide that over there for the time being. We've got punch boards, which are in cellophane. Still trying to save the environment, I guess, in some ways. I'm not going to hit Hypocrisize? I'm not going to call them hypocrites. Uh, these are the different elements of the boats. Uh, let's see if I can't get this open. Okay. So, this punch board feels really nice because everything's wanting to fall over it quite quickly. It's quite thin, but... I hate to be negative, but it does feel quite flimsy. How do the cards actually feel themselves? Oh, they don't feel too bad, actually. They feel quite robust. Maybe it's because it's so big and it's actually cut into already. So, as you can see, that side of the boat looks pretty pretty swish, pretty nice, well polished. And you flip it, and suddenly it's not looking so much like a holiday. And it's the same for the rest of them. So one side, you have got the damage, looking a bit rubbish. And the other side... Is that blood? Yeah, that might be the bad side. Excuse my eye, I'm actually struggling to see which is the damage bit. Okay, nice deck chair, blood stain, and broken deck chair. So uh, I'm gonna go with that, that's partly bad side as well. Maybe it's just mixed up. But it's a nice idea because it shows progressive damage. It's not like you stick a counter on it, you physically flip the tile, which is quite clever. And this is stuff for Act 1 Amity Island. So you've got shark symbols, and these are for the orca. At least that's quite clearly labelled. It doesn't seem too component heavy. I would imagine there's a lot of player decision within it to actually keep these things on and going. But within itself, I'm assuming these are going to be the people who are not having too much of a good time. And these are barrels? 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 Barrels. <laughs> right, let's keep going. So, what else we've got in the bag? We have got... Okay, we've got a couple of turn trackers. Oh, these information cards for players. So this is the shark. Double-sided for Act 1 and Act 2. And they are barrels. Ah, barrel, barrel, barrel. 
So there's Shark in Act 1, possible actions take up to 3. Shark in Phase 2, and it's going to be entirely based on how you do in Act 1. The stronger you get in Act 1, the more you eat, the more energy you're going to have, is going to be another assumption, and we love to assume. Hooper, Bodhi, Quint. Is it Hooper or Hopper? I don't remember from the film. That's definitely not a typo. They're not, they're not deaf enough to make a typo. So Hooper in Act 1 can do all those different things, pick up barrels. And Hooper in Act 2 can do all those things. Very cool. I'm going to go on these are life points because on this side it doesn't have any. And it'd be a bit of a rubbish film if Quint, Hooper and Brody died in the first half because the shark wouldn't really need to eat the boat. It'd be a bit pointless, wouldn't it? Who was it who actually died in Jaws? Who who actually got eaten? I got an impression that it was um, Brody. Although I could com be completely wrong, it's been a fair few years. All right, dice. Engraved and indented dice. Very clear on what everything is. No damage, two damage, one damage. I'm, I'm going to go with that these are for the players and these are possibly gunshots. I know that's not how they got the shark in the end in the film, but maybe you couldn't really get a um, harpoon symbol. Is it a harpoon? No, it wasn't. It was a gunshot, but it was the barrel exploding in his mouth, the oxygen tank. Wasn't that with Jules too, where he came back as a robot? Okay. This. <laughs> Simple, but so effective. So that is the shark, if we're going to get focus. And I think that is just stunning in its simplicity. It's just a grey, curved off triangle with some teeth. Wonderful. This here is a little speedboat, which you can have one of your little meeples on. And this here is, I'm going to go with possibly the lifeguard, who again, can have a little meeple sit on. That's really well thought out. I like the little details. It's, it didn't need it. You could have quite easily had a cardboard cut out, but just having that gives it that little bit of that extra edge. And I also like the fact they are using baggies instead of um, the sealant around the cards. Number one, because I hate the sealant. I always have to take it off screen to open. And number two, because again, like they started trying to save the environment, it's saving the environment because those are reusable. So these cards. Baseball bat, pistol, machete, flares. These are all different things for the players and I'm assuming these are Amity event things that happen on Amity Island resurface shark abilities that's all going to be for the different phases the cards feel they're just cards nothing too special about them there's not actually a grand amount of um, thickness to them but it's not one of those things that's going to end the game and you're going to get torn up apart I do like the simplicity of the insert as well it's going to fit things in and it looks like it was made to fit everything in before being built it's not like you're going to have a lot of space in the box so that was my unboxing of Jaws I am a fan of the meeple and the dice a bit put askew by the thinness of the punchables but that's that's just one of those things. Sometimes you get really thick punch boards, sometimes you get really thin punch boards, and this time it's just on the edge of thinness. But as I said, the boats actually felt, the boat elements actually felt quite sturdy. But again, I think I'm just being a bit, uh, just been a bit cynical about it. The cards, tiny bit thin, tiny bit flimsy, but at the same time, when people go on about cards needing to be a certain thickness and a certain grade, I'm assuming those are the ones where you're going to be constantly using them. Possibly if more for um, trading card games and such. These just need to be cards with the artwork on them. And, you know, when you actually come down to it and you do look at the artwork, it makes sense. It's clear. It explains everything. Maybe could have had a little bit of detail on there, but I imagine the darkness is meant to make it look even scarier. It's a nice looking game. There's no two ways about it. It's a nice looking game and I'm quite looking forward to playing it. Hopefully it'll reflect the film quite nicely when I'm playing as the humans. However, in my history of playing cooperative games where there's one player against the others, I am always on the losing side. Right, thank you very much for sticking around guys. There will be a written review and hopefully it will be on Zatu. Until then, I'll catch you next time.